Hello everyone, my name is Rolando and for today's podcast we're going to talk about improvisation and being a great improviser and what does it mean in society and what else. Perfect. Join us and maybe you'll learn something, maybe not. Would you keep his study messes or get a new one? I don't know actually. <laughs> I, I haven't checked. And then she would say like, "Oh, I love the thing you do, you do to me." This is really bad, isn't it? This is like, <laughs> why do you hate yourself so much, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> you want to die, come back as Jesus. Let's talk Mark. about your issues. Yeah, with yourself. That's what. This <laughs> actually, that that is what we're doing. Here. That's the main. That's the main talk on this podcast. My issues. Right. Yeah. So the she, last episode, Joe came to me and he was like. Can we talk about intersexual dynamics in this episode? And I was like, whoa, that's a fancy word. We can do that. And then <laughs> <laughs> all we were talking about, Joe's dating life <laughs> and how he could get girls. <laughs> and his Tinder. Keep it and... simple, mate. <laughs> I'm doing it for the listeners, I promise. Just dragging them in. Right, right. Like a fish. Yeah. <laughs> Getting them hooked. Good. <laughs> yeah. Cool but today we're talking about improvisation. Yeah. Improvisation. We've just been improvising. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's, now, now, now we are actually our true selves. Yeah, yeah. all that was fake. That's, <laughs> the that's the problem. That's one thing I wanted to ask you. I was like, mm. when I'm really trying to get into being myself, I just then watch the videos after and think, "Fuck, people are going to find this boring." Mm. You know what I mean? And I need to let that go. I, but then, if I let it go, then I think we're going to be boring. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's like the the, the, the hardest critics are ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah always we have this inept quality to look ourselves in the mirror or or just you know feel a bit awkward as places and like oh my god i sound stupid or yeah. I've, i've it must be true because i feel it i feel stupid mm -hmm. or you look in the mirror and like oh my god i'm i have a pimple right there everybody's gonna notice or i have a wrinkle or i have something wrong but but who cares nobody cares you we just look each other in the eyes which <laughs> which yeah Yeah. So what makes for an entertaining improviser? Because I guess improvising is, if, if you really like peel it down, it's being truthful, it's being non-judgmental, it's being present, yeah? So, uh, but then if, 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 if you peel these things off and all you're left with is just this lethargic, kind of low energy kind of human being, uh, mm -hmm. that's not very entertaining and engaging for an audience, is it? No, but like just like you are in conversations, Yeah. Right? Because right now we're having a conversation, we're having fun. Sure, we're aware of the camera, we're aware of the microphones, mm -hmm. but we're basically just having fun. Yeah. And and making a laugh and yeah. thinking of stupid stuff to say and and because it's funny because yeah. we're having fun. Yeah. And basically people would enjoy watching that. They want to be part of the fun. So, and then you can say, oh, well, I'm not funny. Well, but you can t tell a story. How many stories haven't you told in your lifetime? That oh the other day I went I walk, I walked down the street and this guy just threw a rock at me <laughs> and then everybody's like what <laughs> what <laughs> what did you do <laughs> everybody wants to know what the fuck happened <laughs> right yeah and it doesn't have to be like some like action it could also just be the other day I was just walking down the street and suddenly the sun the sun rays just hit this tree and I never noticed this tree before and it just stood out yeah. it was just magical and everybody's like oh yeah. But they're not there. They're just the way you, you talk about it and the way you look at it and you can they can envision it. So they tell the story and it's like the ancient skill set of telling stories around the campfire 10,000 years ago. Do you think we are born with that ability, telling a story? Or do you think that we have to learn it? I think, um, I do think we have, a, we're born with communication skills and and we're born with a sense of of trying to learn. I think it's something that is in deep, like survival skills. I will learn from you so I can survive. I think it's something like that. And I, and then we communicate and like, don't do that, don't do this. And then we have a sense of humor because it's fun. And, and I think it's something like that. And then we, we develop, develop that as we grow up. The science of- So if you it, took like know. three human beings that were not exposed to the society we have right now, mm. put them on an island, would they be having fun? I, I would imagine so. And I how could, would they learn that? Um, I don't I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what they would learn. I think, but I I would 
just to return to the first question, I would I would think like if you poke somebody or you you scratch someone, you know, or you know, and that's that's funny. Or somebody's like a little bit bored and they throw a, a, some sand at you, like don't do that, and then they start they start having fun, mm. right? Um, or or they just see something that they think it's funny. You know, make a funny voice with a banana or whatever it is. <laughs> Some fruit, like, okay, 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 okay. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> I think that is something that, I don't know where it comes from, but I think if something is awkward, I also think it's a part of, like, defense mechanism to, you know, to, like, animals that shake off something uh, a, a traumatic. I also think that laughter can be an ease of trauma. Yeah, and um, if they get angry, they can like laugh it off or laugh it off. And also, like it's connected with enjoyment to find joy in life. So if there's three people, two two guys and one female or whatever, there must be some kind of attraction. You know, like I make you smile, smile. Then what is the next uh, level of, of from smile? Could be laughter, right? Or a little like. <laughs> so you you you're kind of you're you're discovering a good feeling, say a smile. Mm. And then you're kind of going in the direction of that feeling. You're trying to explore more of it. Maybe, maybe unconsciously you are sure. And then in this, in the sense of uh, what do you learn uh, in that in that environment, it would be you know like oh that that felt good. Let's do that again. Or that didn't feel that good. Let's not do that. Should I shut the window? I think that's and a then good we idea. Can cut this bit a little yeah. bit out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just literally focused on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I'm going to save the question for, for when Joe is back. Great. I'll it's just I think uh, this is very interesting. drink some water. Yeah. <laughs> well, that helped a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go outside. Like We might as well sit on the balcony. <laughs> See, we don't. It doesn't even have to be on stage, and we're having fun. I'm so you just have to make noises. That's true, but then you're saying like ooh, goo, 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 like they would do like these funny sounds, right? But then from the outside, if you took an alien here, they would look at us like the same way. They would go like, "Oh, sure. Oh, they're using something called language." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they use yeah, they're, they're using their their body to speak to each other. Yeah. That's really weird. Um, yeah, sure, absolutely. There's like different di kinds of culture have different kinds of humor. Absolutely, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in China, they have a, another thing of 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 looking at things. But that's what I mean. In China, they have another humor, and you know, United States have another humor. Really? Yeah. Sure. So, so like the, like the principle, I guess, that goes for most of humor is when you laugh at yourself. Is that something that doesn't work in China? Uh, no, I'm, no, I'm, sh culture is a huge, uh, it's a huge thing. So in Denmark, we, you know, there's the, um, you don't, what, are, what, what is it called? The, um, don't, don't think you're better than anyone else. What is that called? Yeah, the Yander law. The Yander, the Yander law. Yeah, exactly. And they don't have that somewhere else, but in Denmark we have, and we've developed some kind of black humor also from, from Britain. Black right? humor. That's it. We talk about that a lot. So do, do you think that black humor and like normal humor is the same? Because in, 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 in improv, one of the rules, I guess, unwritten rules is you don't, you don't go to black humor. Like you don't go to the shock value humor, like uh, child abuse humor or racism, uh, and these things that are like hurtful to someone. But then people actually go and they will pay money to see shows that are uh, themed by these things. Sure. Yeah, and they will laugh and they will produce laughter. And I'm and I'm questioning whether that laughter is the same as genuine laughter, or is it just like a release of uh, of pressure or something. Um, it could be, it, yeah, it could definitely be a release of pressure. Um, I also think in the sense of black humor. And so one thing that has to be understood in improv, everything goes. The only thing that is limiting ourselves on, on a stage as improv is our own definition of what rules are. So Americans, they're very prone to, uh, to, um, to political correct uh, things, right? But true improv has no limits. You just do it, and then sure you will offend someone um, or or many, depending depending on where you are. That's why you have to be smart and clever about it. Um, 
But the, if you become overly negative on the stage, right, and you resort to to like black humor or like just being uh, derogative, right, um, then you're not a good improviser, are you? Um, you have to. You can do it if you're sensible. And so, what is an what is a good improviser? For me, a good improviser is somebody who can navigate. So they can use the black humor and actually use it as a as a strength and not a weakness. And if, if that if that improviser chooses to be a negative improviser, just th throwing black humor or, or like or statements that are really inappropriate out there, that improviser should be good enough or, or aware enough to take them back. And the team that is surrounded this improviser should be aware of what's going on and support support the character. That's why I see they get cut off usually. Um, it well, it depends on the team, depends on the practice. It's a, it's really difficult. It's, it's a really huge challenge because, because it's a, you said it's an unwritten rule. Yeah, it's an unwritten rule because you don't want to make audience members feel bad, and you want them to return, right? So it's basically, it's just basically like, if we make a good positive show, then the audience is happy, then they will return. And then they will, and then we can make a name up for ourselves, and so and such, which is a great if you want to do something about it. Um, but in in the sense, there isn't there isn't anything preventing you. And of course, there are people like, oh, you, you should be like this, you should be like that. But in so what, what I'm questioning is the different uh, qualities of humor. Mm. I have a I, I know a guy, for example, who will laugh at uh, like disabled people on the streets. Like he will think it's very funny and. And the only times when he's actually getting the uh, the attention from a group of people is when he does a joke uh, about uh, someone in the group and and and, mm. and and doing some derogative thing about that person or a specific group or making like some overly racist thing. Right. And I found that like people will laugh and sometimes I will even catch myself laughing at these like mostly back in the days. And uh, but it wasn't it wasn't a good laughter. It wasn't like you know that warm feeling. It's, <laughs> it's, it's right, more right. of a Ha ha ha! Well, I guess that was funny because everyone is laughing. Right? Or oh, I can't believe you just said that. Oh my god! Oh yeah, you my feel god! Awkward for the person. Yeah. 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 So yeah, of course. No, but there's there's definitely there's a each one of us have a culture and a moral. Each one of us that is that is not that is not uh, perceived Danish or or whatever. It's just your own your own definition of your personal culture and your personal morals. And those are defined by traumas, by teachers that you've had in your lifetime, parents, uh, society, neighborhoods, friends, television, whatever is dictating the culture around you, you create your own culture. And if you had a trauma where you were laughed at, it might be a, as a sense of ease to laugh at somebody else. Mm. So we have, so we have um, uh, bullies and so on, right? So, so we have to understand where does this laughter come from? Um, it does it, and also does it come from a place of of be hurtful just to be hurtful, or where does it? What is what is uh, what are the premise to making fun of handicapped people or or children being horribly used or whatever? Where does it come from, and does it fit? Do you say it in front of a a classroom of kids? Do you say it in front of a hospital? What what is the premise? Where what are the frames? So all of these things you have to be aware of, and also you have you have to understand who who you are as a human being. Am I saying this because I I am a bad person, or is am I actually a loving, uh, respectful person? And then then how, what would be the chances that you would say that um, in front of an inappropriate crowd? So it's that uh, the definition is all really many many things, and also understand and and so on. Um, but yeah, it's when when is the line drawn, right? Um, so yeah, the, the, the true improv is everything is available. Everything is in the universe, known universe for us human beings. You can do an act. Sometimes it's a good choice. Some sometimes it's a bad choice, and it's a choice nonetheless. Even if it's, if it's a reaction, um, and then you handle it, and then. You know, you can say I'm sorry, or you can just stand by your beliefs that you know I did nothing wrong. It's it was art or whatever it was. I'm an artist. I'm an artist. I can say whatever. I can do whatever, yeah. because it's the truth. Well, yeah, but you know, talk to the victim. 
the survival victim of, you know, whatever, uh, that they probably won't think it's funny. They probably recall the trauma. And that's not a amazing experience for them. Right? Yeah, yeah um, people saying stuff sometimes, they're the one, they're the bully, but they're the ones with the actual, they probably need the help. Mm. Even oh, though they're sure. coming across as the bully. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what I see when I see people in that sort of comedy role. I'm just like, what are you trying to like? Are you struggling with something? Yeah. Why do you find that funny? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, sure. That's what I see. Yeah. Would you take that joke on yourself too? Yeah. 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 If you were raped, like, would you do, would you still do a rape joke? Yeah. For example. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's different. So, so, uh, um, what do you call those? Uh, when you're extremely fat, like, um, they, they go on stage and then they just say, I am extremely fat. And then they tell jokes about how, how they are extremely fat. And so is there, but th then it leads me again to two qualities of humor because you can be self deprecating mm. and, and use um, this self irony as a cover up to, because you're actually, you're talking about real issues, mm. but then you're just camouflaging it with humor. And it, because everyone is laughing at you being fat and you acknowledging being fat, well, no one can really go and tell you after that you actually have to yeah. hit the gym because they've been laughing at you. You've, you've just saved yourself from criticism. Sure. Uh, that's what I see a lot of people do. I do that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I do that a lot. Yeah. 100%. I'm always like making a joke, keep everything in this level, then I don't have to change. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, yeah, my room's a mess. Who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? I haven't shaved my beard in a while. My eyebrows need fucking, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do it on the podcast. Yeah. I'm like, ah, yeah, I've got my drama bottoms on. Make the point of all what you were saying about the pimple. As soon as you said it, I was like, ah, my pimple. Maybe I should do a pimple joke. So I've got one coming here. Yeah. But yeah, it's insecurities, isn't it? Yeah. But sometimes it also, it is also good, like self-irony. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's, uh, it's just funny. Like, like something happens to you that is just unforeseen. Like you stumble over... Uh, a dead pigeon on the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, that has nothing to do with how you manage your life. And you fell, and everyone laughed at you on the street. That's funny, and you can laugh at yourself. So, th so, so that I feel works as like a yeah, self irony a, kind the of situation thing. has occurred, and you just laughing at yourself because of the situation. You're not yeah. trying to protect yourself yeah. by so I see. Something I see up. that as different from laughing at yourself because yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 I'm so fat. I don't have a girlfriend, and everyone yeah, hates yeah. me. Ha ha ha. You know? Yeah, that's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the I think the main like if you go a step higher of of um, consciousness yeah. about laughter, mm -hmm. when we laugh, we kind of okay it because it we okay the joke whatever we, we it is. accept the premise we we accept it and it makes us feel good. And if we go if we go to a higher a higher level of of consciousness, basically what the way we should navigate life is try to just be just be. Mm. Be present. Just let anything just flow through us or around us, and and then not and then not be affected by it. So so what happens happens. So if we look at self irony and you laugh about yourself, basically it's like yeah. So I'm I'm fat and then and that's fine. So basically and then whatever issues that we laugh about, politicians that treat their citizens horribly or bankers that are abusing our money and so and such, we laugh at those things. Basically, like yeah, whatever, whatever happens, happens, kind of, which is basically the way we should look at on on life, because we can't if we are affected by our, our our overweight or by or we get angered and aggravated by politicians or or criminals that do horrible things, then it affects us because it's not very nice or or feel very uh, light to feel anger and and uh, feeling low and depressed and all these things and stress and in our society that doesn't mm. so you don't believe that you need a, um, a certain amount of suffering such as depression or anger uh, to invoke action in your life and change your, yourself for the better um sure i think we pain is a it's a way it's a learning tool you fall down you it, it's hurtful and then you learn to walk or you learn to whatever don't do this again the issue is in our society the way i see it is there's a lot of attention on you know and on the bat right so if you are horrible at school you're a really bad student and you will become nothing and your parents will say it and the teachers will say it and 
people around you will look at you and you will feel it, you'll sense it, and then you get a job as whatever, and you you know you you suck at it and you, you just feel yeah, well I'm not also not worthy anything. You're not learning anything from it. There's nobody saying you're the last in class. You know what? You can do better and I'll I'll teach you, I'll help you, I'll support you. And we don't see the student of that is number one going down to the last student and say, you know, I'll I can help you. I'll I'll make it easy for you. I'll teach in a way that you will learn from this. So there isn't like a, a society support of elevating or, you know, there's a lot of focus on on like economy, money, getting a job, you're being number one, right? There's a lot of selfishness going on. It's funny because in improv class, I noticed that there is no number one, like especially not in your class, you never get that feeling that someone is a good improviser, someone is a bad improviser. Like everyone gets equal amounts of laughs and laughter and claps and attention and scene time. And uh, and that's really funny. And, and like, I remember like some days I'm left with a feeling like, was, was that even good? And, <laughs> and other days I'm left with a feeling of, uh, wow, that was really good, but uh, no one really said it to me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's completely opposite from from the way it works in school, where performance equals uh, appreciation. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's also the the in in my class, but it's also all the classes I've I've attended as a student. Is that if somebody makes a, a mistake on stage, that's a learning a, a learning a possibility, and that's a great thing because then we will we will grow together. Right. So, and if you do something funny and amazing, we laugh, for example, and that feels great as, as well. And we can remember, wow, that's that's a good, that's a neat way of doing that. I can learn from that as well. So, in other case, we can learn from it. We can appreciate it. And then, basically, if you want to go through life, it is in the sense of ease. Yeah. Find find ease in your life. So so we don't f feel down about how we look, how we dress how we how we do things but basically like you know what it's okay mm. or it like in in corona times there's this focus on oh you could do a lot of stuff with your company you should do it so there's a great opportunity to do stuff but why if i don't what if i don't want to what if yeah. i just want to relax and enjoy this moment what's wrong about there's nothing wrong about that in any case i'm taking care of me and then so having that ease that is um that is the the higher level of consciousness that I'm absolutely. But you find that society is set up as like a a dog eat dog. It's a competition. It's very primal. It's like if I've got to eat, I've got to make sure somebody else kind of doesn't eat or there's. But then, what you're actually saying is what makes us human is being realize our like equality kind of thing, um, and that's going to actually create more development in people i've noticed it since i've let go a bit more i used to be very like oh we're just a caveman yeah. walking around because we are like our genetics but then up here we're a lot more spiritual beings higher thinking beings and i think it's a main difference maybe between humans and other animals is that we don't necessarily need that we actually get power from helping each other more and i think society's set up wrong and doesn't realize that it's like a cheat code since i met saru and he's been telling me about you and improv and all this it's like a cheat code, like when you just start to think, it's not a competition. You're not just a caveman. It's yeah. as high level. It, it is a cheat code. Like, for example, when I first understood that you can go further in conversations or in life by not uh, being attached to your position in an argument, mm. that's so powerful. Like if you're discussing, like exactly, before when yeah. I was discussing, I used to, I tried to win an argument. I wanted to come out on top. Uh, because I was attached to the opinion, I felt that if you destroy my belief, then you destroy me. But then once you let go of that, and you're just like, okay, whatever, maybe animal rights is not the the right thing. Let's see. Let's explore your opinion. Then you can just completely dismantle the other person's uh, beliefs and opinion without even trying, without even having any bad intentions. You could just, just by having that mindset of trying to understand the other person rather than be understood. Um that's the most powerful thing you can do uh, in conversation. But yeah. do you know the we say like mortals as a joke? I saw like a bit on the website um, that you do this thing, the practice of the love thing. What things you love is it? Is there other ways that? Because like me in the past, I would listen to this podcast now. I'd be like, oh, what the fuck are they talking about? 
you understand what I mean? Like it'd be hard for me to implement what you're saying, but it's so important what you're saying. But is that what improv is? It's kind of tricking people into doing it more. I've been nagging this guy the whole time I've known him. Like I've tried to like make the connection between mm. improv and and basically the right way to, the right way to live. Yeah. The way I see it is meditation being the introspective uh, way of existence, whereas improv is where you apply the meditative state in relation to other people. Mm. So you learn to be yourself and, and, and be vulnerable, as you call it, uh, with other people. Uh, but, you, but you still see improv as a tool, right? You still see it as a, a mind-made process or something that we engage in. Yeah. I, f I think that we should, we should and, and we are basically, if we are living life correctly, we are improvising all the time. Mm. Absolutely. Without even being aware of it, we're doing character work. We are, when we're storytelling, we are doing object work, uh, what's called relationships, all those things, all the, all the concepts of improv, mistakes are gifts. Yeah. All these rules are applied to a happy, well-aware person. Yeah. Right? Yes. So how do we communicate that? We just tell, do improv, promise you, it work. Is that it's, what we say? Well, the thing is, in our society, in our Western society, there's a stigma that if you, if you, um, if you believe in the universe or energy, yeah, you can't touch it. You can't. You know what? You're weird. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right? You talk to a local plumber. I'm just generalizing hard, hard here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, you know, the or, ordinary, plumbers. ordinary people will look at you like, mm -hmm, no, 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 no. That's <laughs> like some Scientology <laughs> yeah, yeah. bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> right? But they don't even understand what's going on. Yeah. Um. But then you know, like, so religious people, they will believe in God. They will believe in something invisible, but they they won't believe in the universe or. They won't, you know, so people have certain beliefs. You need to let go. What I see with improv is it's a bridge. It's something that is tangible, something you can touch. There's something you can experience. You see it. The training is, it's just, it's, it's fun. It's, it's laughter, right? But you kind of, you're basically training to be more aware on a stage. You're more aware with other people. You start to be more aware of, of people around, of, you know, your life around yourself. Then once you've kind of been, you've trained to be aware of what you say and what you do and how you feel and all these things, then basically you can begin to touch your, on upon the the sense of the and the power of like what energy is or what warmth is or what what if and you ask bigger questions. What if what we're doing here is not the right thing to do in society? That has nothing to do with improv. It's just asking the question out there like hmm what if what i'm doing is not what if the job that i'm having is not the right job for me what if you know what if this truth is not the, it's not the truth at all for me or for anybody else and then you start to move on on a, on a level you go on a journey of self-development that is higher than just uh doing improv right Improv is absolutely for me this the access to to go into a, a a place where you ask questions about yourself to others and life and and you begin to see things you see the flowers you see the brick wall you see things and you can appreciate things being appreciative of of life around you f finding joy in and tasting things listening to things but it started off by being on a stage and having fun and the training was, what does my partner say? And then just to listen to that. Then the exercise is to really listen to the birds and what what kind of noise they make or listen to the wind or listen to the hi-hat in the music and you really appreciate the, the, the music that you're listening to. So it's not just noise. They basically, you know, connect with the music, connect with, with, with the audio book or connect with whatever you're listening to. So, so it's an invitation to tr keep training, right? Because when we we're, we're never-ending students, right? And yeah. then basically appreciate more life, and then in that way you begin to when you appreciate things, you smile more. Smile go turns into laughter, laughter turns into ease, and then you can move through life with ease. And it doesn't matter if it's meditation you enjoy doing or if it's uh, uh, cutting a tree, as long as you actually enjoy it and you find a purpose into it, right? And you can suddenly see, wow, and you then are grateful 
grateful for the old uh, wise men that or women that also like found meditation and the old old wise men and women that found out how to work with wood or whatever it is right mm. and then you're grateful and you go wow grateful and then you smile some more thank you you just say thank you more which is a great tool yeah yeah just cutting the tree and and being it and yeah being there like ellen watts said right uh the zen master or the zen student doesn't contemplate the existence of god while cutting down the tree he's cutting down the tree while he's cutting down the tree yeah <laughs> and i think that's so simple and uh Well, that, that communication again it's still yeah. very like abstract and i don't think people would would get it would they do you understand what i mean like people already watching this kind of podcast or listen to this kind of podcast or going to improv have already started on a journey would yeah. you say so yes yeah, so how we, do we, we we did four we did four archetypes we tried to like figure out like the different types of people that come into improv and I guess you could you could say that some come into just like for pure uh, spiritual reasons because they've discovered that th there is something higher here mm -hmm. that they need to keep looking for, and then there are others who are just doing it for mere practical reasons because it works for their job, their careers, being an actor, becoming a greater actor. They just heard that it works, so they're doing it. And then there are those who do it to enhance like per personal development, yeah, becoming better at talking to girls becoming a better presenter but do you think that number two and number three yeah do you think they'll actually it's the same as when i used to meditate before moving this country i didn't really meditate i was just meditating because i heard it was good because 90 percent of ceos do it and i wasn't truly doing it i was sitting there in lotus position my fingers but i wasn't getting to that other level because my intentions were totally wrong right but if you kept at it okay if you still did it Even if if all you did was just close your eyes and 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 thought about all the all the troubles you have in your life for twenty minutes, mm. even if that's what's what you're doing, you would still eventually come to the same place. Think, okay. So I shouldn't have given up. That's why <laughs> <laughs> some monks uh, spend ten years in 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 a monastery. Um, some some monks spend their whole life in a monastery before they they come to a point of peace with themselves. Uh, I think for me, like, if you want to get it, like, out, so I'm doing some uh, questions for my family quiz tonight, and one of the questions was a fight or flight response part of the brain, the amygdala. Like, if it's basically trying to stay out of that. If we're going to speak to mortals, um, I think that's a good way of putting it. Keeping out of the fight, fight or flight response, staying present, staying in the whole brain or consciousness or whatever. Does that make sense? No. Nope. <laughs> well, no, I I understand. Uh, I, th I think it's the same thing that lots of Asian people they they have a, a ten, they when I ask when I was teaching in China, they were said, "So don't you want to be happy?" Well, you know, I'm asking them about that f dream job, and they did, they couldn't <laughs> answer. They just wanted basically a a, a stable, mediocre life. That's it. Mm. They just wanted to like, they want to go to work, they have a family, and that's it. You know, Survive, and then yeah. just die and just yeah, yeah. But you're not. Don't you really want to really be happy and yeah. like wow? Like no, there's no. And then what I figured out was if they really feel happy, if they go up, they will also have the journey of being extremely sad. Okay, yeah. Because if you love something, that something won't last forever. It will eventually drop down. It could be a new phone. You really love the phone, you know. Yeah, and it breaks. You oh my no oh my god, and it costs money and all. If you've loved human beings, they'll be, you know, they'll be, they they will die, or they will leave you, or whatever. So they don't want these things. So the safe right? option is buy like a mediocre phone. And then when it breaks, it's like, ah, just get a new one. Right. And that's if, what they're saying. So basically, if you don't, if you don't value, so basically, just wanna like a, just a normal, like a con, like a consistent life, mm. right? They don't want too many ups and downs because you know the emotions are not really well looked upon. And they don't share emotions very well, even though they are human beings and they crave it. Mm -hmm. So they are depressing their human human state, right? Yeah. They go to KTVs where they can sing emotional songs and they express and they get um, drunk and they can express uh, emotions that way as well and so on. But like, it's not really well looked upon because that's the culture. Um, and then you can, of course, discuss what is right and wrong. And it's just, that's just a way of, okay. of, of living. Okay. Um, 
And then you were saying, you were saying, um, oh, I forgot what. So you think that is then just okay. You're saying it's culture. This is the way it is. And that's where it's going to be. You don't think it's like good for change or do you think that's why we have these improv classes like as an option like it's like okay you can do this set an hour aside a week or however. yeah you can't you can't push people to to do something that they are not willing to do yeah and also um the the uh fright and flight response is it's natural mm. it's something that are inept and we should just embrace those we don't know what's going to happen we can we can't always be cool um, the 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 issue is that we're living in a society that are kept re putting reacting to all those uh, fright and and, and fright. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, so we constantly like you have to give your homework between uh, before this date. You have to pay the taxes. You can't run over for rent. You can't do this. You can't do that. If you do that, you'll get punished. If you and so on and such. So there's mm. always this stress factor. Stress is the is anxiety and stress is react reactive. Yeah. Of, of this so we are always constantly like oh no then and then we get stressed out by the sound and we can't focus and we can't and i'm a bad boyfriend and, I'm, and i have a bad girlfriend and i can't find my dream and i and whatever all these things are not very healthy but if you but we can't take them away because it's part of our survival so so we have to be aware that all these things are going on and basically Except. like let go so meditation comes in into play you can find peace, right? You can calm down. Because people can survive that way. They can survive it. Like, oh, we survive. Then it's hard to get the belief to like, okay. I was trying to tell someone to start meditate the other day. And it's like, how do I say this? Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, just try it. So, <laughs> so <scientific> benefits. <laughs> if you have a life like, like this, you can survive. But I was just talking about being grateful and feeling light. And, and looking at the beauty of stuff, of anything, right? Look at the beauty. Basically, you you then, you you will level up and like start to enjoy it. Enjoy it is not here. Enjoy it is up here and love is even higher, right? But then if you look at a flower and it's really beautiful, somebody stepped on that flower and they're like, oh no, I'm sad now. Mm. But it, but life is about, and it happens all the, all the, all the time around us, all the time. Mm -hmm. Something is born, Something bloom, something, something. Uh, you, Visna, they um, uh, like the disease. Fade, fades they fade away yeah. and they die. It's just like this. Just it's the circle of life. There's death all around us, but we don't talk about death. Death is is part of life. We don't talk about it. Why don't we? <laughs> I like that the first uh, exercise uh, Rolando did with one with a group of new student, students was actually a game called Samurai. <laughs> so it's it's a game where you if you if you lose the game you have to kill yourself with a samurai sword okay. in the most horrible way ever, <laughs> and then you die. Have we done something similar? And then and then people did it, and everyone was laughing and ha ha ha. And then Rolando just breaks the laughter. We did this exercise because death is a taboo in today's society. <laughs> and I was like, this is so great. And, and yeah, and, and I think people could acknowledge that. Absolutely. Because they were laughing. So you create the laughter and you're like, ha, you laughed at this. And like my, uh, I, I have some family members who are like, uh, they have a child who's like five years old and they are trying to keep that child away from the concept of death. So the 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 kid's uh, grandfather passed away, and the year up to his death, the kid was not allowed to see him dying, mm. because death is not very fun, is it now? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so yeah, right. and uh, and I thought that was fucked up because if you go back in time, death was mm. all around us. Right. Ricky Gervais, he has a, a great uh, YouTube uh, interview about death and how he, in his family, somebody died and. And I think he also did it on a stand-up comedy show. Anyway, but but yeah, his somebody in his family died, and then how they all made jokes and the priests and you know and and stuff. But it's it's it is a release, right? But you have to acknowledge death to appreciate life. So to be a human being is not about being like in stand or, or being leveled. It's about having these emotions because we are emotional human beings, and instead of staying bad and staying down in um, you know down and, and press pressured with stress and all these things because that's not very healthy that's destructive for us we need to stay up here right mm. but still acknowledge death and come back up right be find the ease of it 
smile and be grateful. That's that's the idea. So thank you for the flower that was alive. Thank you for the grandfather that I saw the last year about and taught us a lot of things. And thank you. And then the the most challenging things in life is thank you, Donald Trump, for fucking up our economy. How can you say thank you for somebody, you know, somebody evil or somebody bad? How can you, criminals, how can you say thank you, be grateful to somebody who does something bad to us personally or to somebody they really care about? Um, you know, how can we say, well, it's, it's, that's, that's the very high level. So do you of, believe there are good and bad people? N- no, I don't, but it's, it's the way of saying it. So if, if you hit me, I'll have, I'll have pain. I would assume that's bad. So you're a bad human being. You know, it's kind of but because what the normal person would right because we right? need to put people in boxes. We need to, right? And it's that's how we have learned, but it's also how we compute things, mm. right? Um, but it's, so to to become even more higher elevated of, con- of conscious is basically understanding there isn't there isn't right and wrong, right? There isn't good or bad, right? There is something that makes you heavy or makes you feel easy or or, or light, and then how can you navigate in it and how can you how can you use it in a constructive way so we so so we can play the infinite game which is um i can't remember his name now uh, simon C- Cicek talked about the infinite and the the finite game the finite game is like the um a football game is finite you know uh, when we reach 10 goals that's that's the game and we win mm-hmm. or we lose or whatever the infinite game is the forever uh, exp- uh, living expansion of goes giving our knowledge back to our children so they grow up and they learn something and they give their knowledge back to somebody and we keep developing ourselves the, right? the reincarnation consciousness it can yeah. be it can be yeah. a way of thinking that way yeah. absolutely right and you can and for people who don't believe in ghosts and goblins that can be that is that's a hard concept reincarnation but they, but they can actually value that we will what we'd learn in the class what we did on a stage right we can pass that on to to your students that have been um, that just started and they can learn from that right so if they don't believe in 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 spirit spirituality uh, or religion or, or thoughts like that they can de- definitely understand that if i've invented the the uh, the wheel my children doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. We can invent the floating wheel now, or you know, uh-huh. we can keep developing and and learning from our wisdom. Yeah, that's the infinite game. So you can still have a purpose that is bigger than yourself, even though you don't believe in in, in consciousness and reincarnation. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can st- and then still empower the humanity develop the human development. Absolutely. Yeah. Just I have I have a question for you. A quite interesting one. I just thought of it. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, when you when you engage in conversations with other people, do you use some philosophical background for that interaction? Say, for example, in uh, in improv, the rule is you have to pretend like you've known someone for six months, and that makes for a more, I guess, a more deeper connection with your scene partner. It makes you more comfortable with touch, laughter, jokes. Nothing is really uh, taboo anymore. I think six months is like a good time. If, like if you've known someone for six months, you can you can consider them a friend. Do you have something like that when you engage with people you just meet on the street or in the supermarket? Um, the the technique of you known each other for six months and more um, is is a technique. So basically, for improv, it's like you don't need to talk about hi, my name is Peter. What's your name? And then you skip all of that. You know the job, you know everything, and then you just start a scene. But if you go look at it even deeper, is what you're saying. You come in with an ease, and and basically, so an openness, because you already know each other. But if you take that into real life, it's the same thing. Come with, uh, meet people with an ease, just like children. Mm-hmm. Most children, before they get they get educated on like, don't talk to strangers. They are like, who are you? Right. And what do you do and why? And they use just talk and like, why do you have why do you have a why do you have a helmet on your bicycle when 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 it's a helmet for a motorbike? And they just and you just, you know, it's an interesting question. 
from a kid who have never seen you before. They're just wondering, why yeah. is this? <laughs> but they're not so much wondering about the helmet, do you think? Or do they wonder about like the... Because as a kid, I remember myself, I was contemplating the existence of reality all the time. Mm. And seeing other kids was like a mind fuck for me. Mm. They're <laughs> same, same as me, but they're different. And yeah. they're over there. Right. They're sitting over there. Uh, that was interesting to me. And then it's like, oh, wow, you have different clothes. Let's talk about that. Because that was all I could really comprehend with, with, the, with the words I had. Sure. And that what you had there is the, the openness, the curiosity, and yeah. the eager to connect with people. Where today, grown-ups, they look at people from Christiania or from, from Blogos Plus, or they look from, uh, you know, whoever, um, what do you, box they yeah. you put on with people because they're dressed, right? Oh, there must be street gang. There must be, you know, musicians. There must be whatever it is. Uh, and they don't connect with each other. They don't talk to each so other. So bad. They don't, they don't uh, want to learn from each other. So that's... Yeah. I. Going back to that point, and you were on about the up and down scale with the happiness and being sad. Like, I feel like humans are kind of like that. We're like, we we kind of know this stuff. Some of us know it, this end, and then some of us know this end. But then we don't communicate to find the center, to stay on the center path. Do you think it's actually possible? <laughs> like, I feel, I feel like a generation that <laughs> was like really valuing like happiness and chilling out. Then their kids come through and like, oh, I'm going to be really focused on making money. I don't know. Like, I feel like there's always like a a fight. It's like, it's never, how can we communicate it to people? Like, well, maybe this is just part of life and it should never be communicated and it should always be discovered. I don't know. There is, I don't think there is a, an easy way because again, human beings, they will, they will do whatever they feel like doing yeah. or whatever they think it's deemed appropriate by, by themselves. Right, um, and they will look, probably learn it. Right, um, I remember. I remember my mother uh, and I. We were at my mother's friend's house, and De Denmark and Spain was playing soccer, um, and I was not torn, but you know, it's my mother from Spain, mm -hmm. and then I was born in Denmark, and they were like playing against each other. So like, Denmark uh, made a goal, and then my mother just slapped me from across, <laughs> oh, you know. Shit. Just like a massive <laughs> slap, I started crying. She started laughing. My and her friend was just she was in awe and like, don't don't support uh, Denmark. You are Spanish. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. <laughs> right. Oh. But uh, and I was like five or six years old. I still remember. So so, yeah. You you'll learn. You'll learn from society around you what is right and what is wrong, and depending on the the age and the culture and, and so and such. Right, um, and then you grow up doing this. So you have to kind of, you have to have a, a a moment where like, it's not about race; it's about pigment, and it's not about pigment. It's about different viewpoints of power or f feeling let down, or you know, like oh wow, you know, you start, you have to th keep learning, educating yourself, realizing things, and then like, hmm, I don't want to be part of this. I want to do yeah. something else. It's about understanding that that like one person is not better than another person. For example, what about what about uh, animals? Mm. Does does that logic apply to them too? I or, think, or do you feel that humans are better than other animals? I I believe I actually at this point in time, because us humans we don't really accept who we are as humans uh, because humans are animals, so we yeah. don't really we don't really embrace that, and we don't feel natural. In the sense of we're not we're not connected with our senses, because we we all have this. Um, oh, I I wanna I haven't talked to my friend for so long, and then doo -doo -doo, somebody calls, and it's your friend that you haven't talked for so long. I just thought about you. We all had that experience. Yeah. Where how does that come? It's not just me. It's tons of people that have experienced this, um, and animals they just have that. Animals, they can, they feel when there's a tsunami going on or something mm. in, in, you know, terrible going on in nature. And they will just move their nest. They'll just escape. And us humans, which is also, we are also able to feel what's going on in nature. Yeah. We're just standing there. And even some of us would run to the danger and begin to take selfish and, and, and record it. You know, the huge fucking blast of, you know, water coming in. Tuna and heads. then, and then like, are we better than animals then when we are running to danger and our own demise and, and animals just like, 
something is vibrating. This is not good. Let's get out of here. <laughs> right. Curiosity right? killed the cat <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe we're too, um, I don't know, not like conscious, too, I don't know, rational and too curious. That, we could, that could be our like demise with chasing the neck. I don't know. I do. I do. I feel that it's because we're not connected with our bodies and with sensing what's going on vibrating in our life. So are you a vegan then? I'm no, I'm no, I'm not. A, I'm not a vegan. I, I eat. So how do you I justify want? killing an animal, which is maybe even higher on the on the ranking than you are as an human animal? Well, if I can. I have a I have a sense of respect. So if back in the time they would kill animals, respect, pray for the animals, use the whole animal, there was some kind of a sense of, you know, connecting with nature in all tribes all over the planet. Mm. And we lost that. We lost We're that. basically just you know, putting through tons and tons of chicken uh, and and molesting them like horribly feeding the poison and all and then we're also feeding ourselves but there's a there's a sense of for my sense is i can respect animals um so you actually go out and hunt your own animal you bake a fire you do a <laughs> dance and a ritual and uh... i would i somehow i i would love that i could do that yeah same um, yeah. Somehow, I would love to do that. I would, I would really love our society would actually care more about that. So we, I mean, I wouldn't. I would love to have a farmer that would go out and basically honor the animals, and we could teach our children to honor animals. But in this society, we don't have that. We used to we, have shepherds, you know, like we. It used to be like a battle yeah. between shepherds and farmers. Yeah. It's like agriculture and and, and shepherds. Yeah. And then there's like a twist in time. Was, imagine if we just stayed as shepherds because shepherds used to be like beasts of men like moving their sheep through the wild wilderness they didn't own the wilderness they just protecting their sheep from the wolves from the lions imagine how much society would be different if we're like oh shepherds cool they still guy. have that in we, some countries but you think yeah. of a shepherd now yeah. you think of like a some guy but shepherds back <laughs> in the old day that's why like um in biblical stories the shepherd is seen as like a warrior mate he's out there in the elements living with his flock of sheep protecting them against wolves and lions whatever whereas now we think of it, it's just like yeah and we actually think of farmers as being kind of like oh farmer strength kind of thing but farmers is like for me like it's a real non-powerful thing to be doing just in cage like in caging animals and yeah treating them like shit one of the one, one of the things that i would love our society to, to teach our children and our ourselves in general would be self-respect and respect for others. Starting with, of course, animals, because they are connecting with us. So how do we respect animals? Well, how how do we respect anything living? Like by, by for example, not uh, supporting the torture and murder? <laughs> <laughs> no, but- That would be a first step, wouldn't no, it? No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. And then you can only do whatever you can do or like think, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my own, uh, you know, association and gonna like call it cream, Greenpeace, and then just go out, you know, and fight for. No, you just you just start you just start buying the dead flesh of animals. Sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's the most powerful thing anyone can do if they I, love animals. I've yeah. just come off a vegan challenge. <laughs> I was in a vegan challenge twenty days, and I feel so. I'm keeping it, um, especially the cheese and the eggs, keeping away from that, and I'm not eating meat. And my mom was really upset with me. She's like, "Joe, what am I gonna do when you come home? And I've got to cook you some meat." I was like. If you can prove to me that that was a wild shot deer, then I'll eat it. Because she's done that for me before. Like with the, yes, yeah, it says on the packet, be careful, there might be a bullet in here, kind of thing. If she can do that, that's fine. And then. That's so cool. You can actually chew on a, like, accidentally yeah, yeah, exactly. get a the bullet. Pallets, yeah. What? Yeah. And then I was like, and it's really strange going back to that connection thing. I was going to meet Saru, and I was like, it's the last day. But I've been thinking, if I really want to stick to it, I'm not going to be one of these guys that when he goes to someone's house, it's like, yeah, I'll just eat meat now. Because I know me. If I just eat that bit of meat, I'm all or nothing. So then I'll just give up on the vegan type thing. So I said, I'll eat fish. And then you come up to me and you're like, the same day I was having these thoughts thinking, just eating fish. You're like, Joe, I saw something horrible this morning. <laughs> I saw the sea being dragged up. And then there's like dying animals. And I was like, no, bro. It's like consciousness went through him. Like, <laughs> stay on the vegan path. But 
if I'm honest, even after you tell me that, I need more. I'm still, I'm just going to be no meat, no cheese, no eggs, no farm stuff. But I'm still going to eat fish. It will come to you one day. You think? When, you're, when, you're, when you're scuba diving in Thailand and you have this clownfish who's Bro, pursuing you we need for to one to... hour and having eye contact with you. We'll go to Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> I actually also had a vegan garbage. dream tonight. A vegan dream? Yeah, yeah this oh. night I was, yeah, so I was apparently rescuing cows <laughs> <laughs> from a cow farm. Maybe it's just a metaphor for Samir. <laughs> it was a really long, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. But yeah, it was, uh, we have a friend whose spirit animal is a cow mm. and we're trying to uh, put some horns on it so he becomes a bull. That's a different <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so I was at this cow farm and I was rescuing cows and me and the cows, we made this amazing escape plan uh, through the night and I managed to rescue two cows who believed in me because the others were like, okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so two girls, yeah, two, two, female, female, cows, two yeah. female cows, are the you, same age as me, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Are, you, are you the bull? Did it go, did it go down that route? <laughs> so then we, yeah, we, we went through the fence and uh, we went into the woods and one of the cows just took off and then it was me and the other cow and then I felt like damn this cow has a really good personality I really feel like a connection here <laughs> we need to reproduce is that what the next stage and then I looked at the cow and I'm like ah what a shame that you're a cow huh? <laughs> <laughs> and, then the, and then the cow said well look I can stand on two legs and then she stood on two legs and she then yeah and then she, she she pulled her hair back and I was like whoa she looks just like a Mexican woman <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> That's not a trippy dream, mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's so detailed. Though. And now I'm interviewing a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> What's the odds? Yeah. But yeah, um, this is uh, this is representative of Saru and me. Oh. Yeah. So I drew this. I like didn't draw much. Yeah. I mean the and background. Then I started again. Yeah. Would you? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you're here standing in the background you're yeah. in the foreground I just did a well sense. no but also you, you're more in the light and I'm more in the dark you could say you're more calm I'm more what's I've got your my... spirit animal um I I was one of my friends uh she said her spirit animal was a buffalo and then she asked cool. me the same question I was like I don't know what then she was like, what do you feel hmm, I don't know a panther or a puma mm. okay cool but I don't know buffaloes are pretty cool though yeah, she, yeah, she's yeah. a cool. Wait, not like, well. not the uh, water buffaloes, but the bu <laughs> the bison, the American buffaloes. Yeah, They're yeah, really yeah. cool. I'm just covering myself. Up. But in, yeah, that's. I I'm not a vegan, um, and I it is, and it's not because I don't respect animals. It's just I just have other priorities, and I think I think, I I respect people's priorities. And yeah. respect their choice, and it it is what it is. It's if you if the human being if the human being you or, or you John also feel feel happy by being vegan, and you feel like you're making a difference, especially for you guys. Amazing, great, yeah. completely respect for that. Um, I so my, for for me like the reason why I started was because of the hypocrisy. Mm. It it wasn't like ah oh, I want to change the world and like save all the cows. I just I just had like this uh, this constantly occurring thought in my head mm. because I love animals. I have a cat. I would I would never kill a cat. Mm. You know I would never kill an animal. And then what's the difference between a cat and 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 a cow, for example? Right. Or they're basically the same. I have this little cow farm right next to my house and they have like this these free range cows they're walking around and you know like because they're so small they look like big dogs right mm. so they have tails like what's the actual difference <laughs> i would never kill that mm. right. i would not even hurt that i wouldn't you know it, it you know inseminate it or like put something up in its anus so it can produce milk for me right i would never touch it i would just leave it have its own life just like if i saw a squirrel I wouldn't just take the squirrel and say, now you're mine, you're going to be my dinner. Right. No, no, I'm like, you're beautiful, stay here. I, can, I, 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 don't, I don't need to eat you. I can be, I can have all my nutrients from, from plants. Why would I cause this unnecessary harm to nature and other animals? Mm -hmm. And then I come home and there's a, a steak on my plate. And now I'm enjoying that. Wait, wait, that's a contradiction. Yeah. I can't live with this. Mm -hmm. It's either or. Either I'm okay with abusing animals or I'm not. And then I take the, the necessary actions that goes with that. Mm -hmm. 
So that was basically just to clear myself of that um, hypocrisy. Makes sense. Yeah. The way I see it is that um, the air we're breathing is going through all the animals and across the planet all the time. And all the animals on this planet and all us human beings, everything on this planet is is built by the same atoms and the same nucleus f- for for millennia. We are old dinosaurs. We are we are thoughts. We are all kinds of things. Um, so for me, it's not about eating or not eating an animal. It's by being grateful. I'm grateful that I have some food. And talking about reincarnation, maybe they're not reincarnated as an as an animal, but it is scientific fact that whatever we're eating will come through our body. It will it will energize us, energize us. And then whatever the poop that comes out is also atoms will then fertilize plants and give come back to the circle of of the planet and the known life that we are. So by me being grateful of the steak I'm eating or I'm grateful of the food, whatever it is, the fruit or whatever, and I'm grateful, the 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 energy of me being grateful, that joy, that, that vibration that I send out, that is something that I can give to the planet, some memory. So it doesn't matter for me if it's um, if, if I'm completely vegan and I save tons of animals because animals will live and die and that's just how it is. And then, but I, what I can support is like the cruelty, mm. you know, because cruelty is also a memory. So, so, but then I can't, I can't go into a restaurant and then are these animals, uh, or be concerned all about all the time, or being stressed, or having negative thoughts about oh this restaurant they probably use uh, some animals that have been really hurtful or whatever. So the only thing I can do is basically feel feel grateful for there's a restaurant and the restaurant is is surviving and there's happy people there and I feel good because of the sign and oh this is a great place for me and I come back and. All these things, and then whenever I'm full, like wow, this was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you to who? Yes, for the chef, for the service, but also just for life and for myself for enjoying it and, and tasting my taste buds. So I, I just like wow, this is great. And I have a smile, and I walk down the street, and I smile, and then some stranger will look at me like, hey, he's smiling. Mm, I'll smile back without even thinking about it, and maybe I've made a little change on that human being. Then so and so and so. And so. So for me, so you care about uh, the happiness of that human being on the street, who will be um, affected by your smile. Essentially, that's that, that's that's, a, that's that's important a huge thing. Yeah, 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 that's important. And then before, uh, just to keep you uh, uh, logically consistent, you said that you also care about other animals' well-being, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you you eat a steak, which is contributing to the suffering and harm of one animal for not a split second, which that smile is. Right. It's it's for an entire lifetime, right? So so yeah. an entire lifetime of harm is producing a short smile for you that you will then give a, give yeah. Pa- but pass I also on to a I also I also it has to, I think bigger than this. I also think like if you look at it in in the point of view, I also pay taxes. Taxes support the government. Government that supports politicians who who then make decisions that I don't have any power of on things that like let's make a bridge and then destroy this floor forest so it kills thousands upon thousands of animals, um, and so on. So I I live in a society in a cement jungle. I uh, you know there's. I contribute with so all. So you're saying it's impossible not to do any harm. Uh, it is and technically, and I, and I agree with you. I agree with you. Even even a vegan is doing harm to other animals just by eating eating uh, vegetables. Of course, you like you're using pesticides for those crops. Sure. Those pesticides kill insects, sure. and then you have to shoot an occasional rabbit that tries to eat your your carrots on the field. Right. Obviously, even a vegan does harm, but. We're talking about necessary or unnecessary harm. Sure, right? sure, sure, sure. And you sure. can eliminate all the unnecessary harm from your right. life by, for example, being vegan. Right. By, for example, not uh, being negative to other people. Like right. there are many ways we can eliminate unnecessary Absolutely. harm. Absolutely. Right? And I and I'm and I'm not I'm not saying this to like uh, change people's minds or or you know if because that's the thing if you if you force people to change their minds they'll just. Stand stronger. 
or absolutely clam or yeah, whatever, yeah. right? And like, then like a muscle. Yeah. Right. And then it doesn't matter <laughs> if you're muscles. a vegan yeah. or a carnivore hundred percent or they're following some kind of diet. Yeah. They'll just you don't you know, don't yeah, yeah. tell me what to do or not. The amygdala. Um, fight uh, what is it? Fight, flight, or freeze. Yeah. Mm. They'll just freeze up on you, go solid. Yeah. Right. You get speak to that part of the brain. Yeah, it's true. So so but I so for my my point of view is what is pain? Pain are, are, mm. are signals sent from your brain down to your body. So I can, what is empathy? Empathy is an imagination. It's a thought that also go, connects with your body. So I can put myself in animal's harm. So an, a, a little spider is an animal and a cow is a spider. Or let's say a, even like a, a kitten. Because animals, that is, children of animals we connect even higher with. Right? It's okay to kill a cow, but it's not okay to, to kill the baby. Right, it's you know, it's not a, it's it's okay to uh, kill a gorilla, but not a little gorilla monkey. You know, it's not. So we connect with these small little entities, and we want to raise them up to then later kill them or eat them. Um, but this is still a spider. They're still insects. They're just as much uh, um, right to be on this planet, if not even more important, because they're part of the food chain than anybody else. Um, but we don't. It's okay to to kill a spider. Or it's okay to to step on an ant, right? Are you saying it's okay? No, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying that is the perception. Or like, so we we will we wanna we wanna save the cows, but if there's a spider in your bedroom, kill it. Or or maybe you learn to capture it with a glass. That's just hypocrisy. Sure. Yeah, sure. that's not something to learn from, is it? Mm -hmm. um, but but I guess we have to ask ourselves what is uh, what do we believe in? Sure. And how can we live in alignment with those beliefs? Like for me, it's it's never been about veganism. It's just about being myself and being true to myself. Right. Those two principles. Uh, that's the only thing I go by in life. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and I that's the and power from uh, being V. Like, so I was really against it because I was really like, I'm a primal being. And I think animals, every, even, um, was it Bulgaria or Bolivia? This is like a hunter-gatherer tribe. And they're one of the most healthiest people in the world. And I was always looking for that standpoint. But then when I started to, with the ethics for me the only reason i don't want to eat meat again is just because yeah i don't think i'm um yeah i don't think i'm as great of a thing that i can eat something that's been through torture and thing and then afterwards i was like and i feel good <laughs> like my fitness levels have gone crazy i sleep better and i'm more conscious about what i eat because i'm always watching out for like is there milk in it because then if there's milk that milk is basically it doesn't say milk anymore it, it, i see and i never thought this would happen <laughs> i see the word milk and then i see a cow in a farm with bloody tits right and it's really like it made me more conscious i, th I believe there's a lo there's a lot like each side of whatever they believe in have argument arguments. Mm. So we don't look at a cow and like mm, milk, and then you crawl under the cow and you start <laughs> and start sucking the, the tit. We don't we don't do that. No. Um, so and then we don't look at a cow and think, oh wow, meat, and then you stab it to death and then cook it. But you look at a, See, a I, you I look at a, you're looking at an apple and you look oh. Mm, yeah, and you you can take the apple and it's fruit and okay. it tastes great, right? Yeah. Um, also, if you look at the, the consistency of an apple, it's the perfect. Uh, it's a, it's like a it's designed designed food for your human body, yeah. right? Because mm, they said it has fibers true. and has everything else. But now we have to process it and then we make apple juice, which is super healthy. Yeah. But there is four apples in the juice instead of one. And we can maybe eat two apples in our body and then we're like, that's enough. Yeah. I don't need anything else. But we need we can easily drink uh, for a little juice four apples which then has the amount of sugar, extra sugar, mm. right? So, and we can easily, if we're really thirsty, drink a liter of, yeah. of apple juice that has maybe 20 apples of worth of sugar, and then we drink that. Um, there's all kinds of, of, of ways we can look at these things uh, upon, but it's a, a, what you're saying is right, and what you're saying is right for you guys. I'm not, you know, and then, and then if, That's you, true. if you look at it on, on a dip, because... Our eating habits is another thing. We need to eat breakfast. We need to eat lunch and we need to eat dinner. Yes, but have you asked your body if it's hungry 
or is it or is it just a conviction? Is it just like a culture? It's a habit. I come home, I hang up my clothes there, and I throw my my keys there. I do that every day. So it's just a habit. Do you think that's good? Well, even th- to the keys and the. I think I think it's a, a human beings are efficient human f- animals. So we create we create uh, patterns, and that's how you know we just like ants and just like bees, and we we can we have an intelligence so we connect. I just think we disconnect, and we ha- make habits that could be unhealthy for us. Okay. But we don't ask our body. We don't ask, "Are you really hungry?" Like, no, that's I'm better, not, isn't it? I'm not really hungry. And then we are designed not to eat all the time. Yeah. And we are not. We are not. We are designed to be able to survive without eating for a long time. Yes, yeah, functions and happen. happen and really good. we've never had an issue about killing animals that we talked about. We respected them and we used them. And then we would have food. Um, you know. And would have food for a long time, but we would also preserve food, and maybe not eat for five or ten days, and that would be also fine. And our bodies will will suffice and be strong, and all these things, um, th- things that we've known for thousands of years. But it's it is because we've had a, a, a since the beginnings of the industrial age. How can in how can we we improve uh, and and quantify and improve uh, you know how to make cars and, and factories and how can we can make 10 chickens how can we you know throw out a hundred chickens and how can we make more money and how can we yeah, you know about. how can we get people to eat things oh syrup syrup is great are we gonna how can we <laughs> improve on better crops let's gmo or whatever or mto or whatever it's called um let's Genetic let's design let's design our own crops that can is better for us without testing them, and then there's all these things that are part of our society. But do you always find like when we chase one goal, like I say, economy, growth, of technology, like even when they're on about, oh, we're gonna ge- um, genetically create um, meat, like the same. That's like the new thing. I can't believe we don't look back at history and be like our innovation and what it's actually done. Has it been? innovative or have we just created another problem that then has to be solved by another problem whereas if we changed our focus from economy i know this is never going to happen Why but not? May, it maybe it will because i'm talking about it so maybe there's like people especially higher level of intellect than me that are talking about it um but yeah why don't we change our focus do you know what i mean like we we change we follow one problem to another to another i don't want to eat this genetically mod- modified meat because i know 10 years down the line but oh so now we found out it's the worst thing for you <laughs> and then we're all turned into vampires or something crazy <laughs> vampires you know what I mean? all things <laughs> yeah like i am legend she finds the cure for cancer doesn't she in that movie and then everyone turns into like zombie vampires it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good uh advertisement for like not just trusting we always just trust what's going down that route we don't chase spirituality anymore like what you were saying about the respect of animals ancient um american cultures when they kill the buffalo they're prizing that they pass it around the group they're um that's their like the buffalo symbol is like something of the life giver it's a symbol of life but yeah they're killing something they're getting something from it from there their culture the rich person in that tribe gives all their money away once a year. And then you just lose this. Why can't we learn that? Like, okay, the rich person every year gives their money away to poor because they're a driven, highly intelligent person. They'll be able to make it again next year. I know that sounds, but it's just crazy that we don't look in other perspectives. We're so focused on becoming more efficient to make more money. And this is what I've started doing more. I used to think it was all about habits like self-improvement, just like, okay, get up at this time, go to bed at this time, eat this good food. Then when I spent more time with Saru, I realized it's the opposite. It's about what you said, asking your body, am I hungry? Um, What is my goals? Am I sleepy? What, do you know what I mean? Like every moment asking yourself, being here, be present. And that's what I found. And people need to do that because I didn't believe in it. And now I'm doing a podcast, personal training, <laughs> another boot camp job. Like I'm so driven and motivated at the moment. And I thought I was before, but before I was just chasing, I was just whipping myself before. 
Right. Whereas now I'm living in every moment, like here. I might see quite confident, but I want to be able to do this 18 months ago. Speak right. to you guys and be like, have something to say. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> am I interesting enough? I'm good at shout. Yeah, I'm good at shouting <laughs> at people. Do some burpees and all yeah. this. But then having a conversation and trusting what I'm saying, yeah. even though I'm speaking in my tongue, like English, have you guys like, I don't know how hard it is because I don't know another language. But yeah, it's uh, thank you, Saru. And it's nice meeting you too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, I'm so grateful for all this. <laughs> nice. I'm in the moment. That's brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's going a bit. It around. is. It is the. It, it. We're not. We're not teaching our children that. Yeah. Exactly. And and us as parents or as, us as grown ups, we we don't really know. So so it's so it's. How can we teach something to our kids that we we ourselves don't know? Yeah. And how can we teach our kids something that society doesn't deem important? We deem important money. We deem important education. We deem important that we need to have some certain goals, have a house, have a car, have a have a marriage, have kids. You know, it's just we deem that. We don't ask what is it. What is it you as a human being? What is you, what is it you want right now? And then what is it you want to change? And then support them. And then at some point, also support. And I'm, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I want to. I want to be a plumber now. Great, do that, and then find the joy in that. Yeah, right. Because it's like, oh my God, it's a waste of intellect that you've studied eight years to be a doctor, and not even gonna. Now you want to be a plumber? What the f? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's you true. Can't, you, you can't do that. You will destroy our society. Also, some people like they get the, these qualifications for whatever job they want, and then when they can't get that dream job, let's say doctor, because there's enough doctors in their specific field in the area, mm. they've either got to move miles away from family. And then it's like, is it really worth that? Or they just get frozen. They're like, ah, I'm not going to do any other job. I'm just going to wait until that doctor's job comes up. And then they start to feel terrible about themselves because they're not earning. Right. I had a little fly in the room. I just killed it. <laughs> I'm not <Great>. vegan. <laughs> I'm Bruce Great Lee, respect, though. man. Yeah. Great Re respect. Respect, <laughs> reflexes. Go hand in hand. <laughs> um, no, but you, you're absolutely right. It's We don't ask and we don't appreciate. And there's amazing uh, people out there uh, so Ken Robinson is one of them. Has he's famous on TED because he has some amazing talks where he he's, he says this example where this mother uh, brings her daughter to the doctor, but she can't because she can't sit still, and you know she can't concentrate at class. And then the doctors uh, interviewing them and so on. And then can I talk to you for a moment? He he asks the mother like sure. So before he leaves the room, he he just turns on the radio. And then takes the mother outside the door and looks through the window. And then they can see the dad, the daughter dancing. And then the doctor, there's nothing wrong with your daughter. Your, your, your daughter's just a dancer. Yeah. And oh. then and then the mother took her to uh, to the dance academy. And she turned out to, to create and uh, um, architect some of the best wow. Broadway shows ever. Be, be true yeah. to yourself. Be true to yourself. But that's an amazing doctor. And that's an amazing mother. Yeah. Right? yeah, and then Something special, yeah. and then also amazing child that just music. I want to dance. Yeah, right. Um, that that is not something that we are focusing on in our society at all, right? And and that's why also when we look at our politicians, we see politicians that are fighting against each other and and lying and like, oh, what? Why? Why are you? Why are you not respecting mm. us? Why are you not respecting the office? Why not respecting yourself and then do things that actually would, uh, you know, benefits all of humans. Because it's cat right? and mouse, isn't it? Again, it's the rat race. The reason they do it is because everything we value, it goes down to me doing this quiz with my family. Every time I do the quiz with my family, I try to come up with, we're going to do rock, paper, scissors tonight. One of the rounds is going to be rock, paper, scissors live because we do it on FaceTime. But every other person asks a question, it's just like, it's like a memory game and that's what we value. We don't value like, okay, let's do rock, paper, scissors and see who's the best at tricking the other person into, I don't know. There's just options. We follow one path and we it, there isn't one path. Right. Life is, a. it's not even f from here that way. It's every direction and we've really lost that. Oh, absolutely. Species, whatever And And are. it's not only, we, we just talked about 
like jobs and and politics and what whatever food we eat and how we navigate but relationships we don't ask our friends what is it you want we don't ask our lovers we don't ask the, our lovers body what what do you need from me mm. and we don't we don't set ourselves boundaries that's another thing yeah so so I want to I want to give you a, a shoulder a shoulder um rub okay and then and then <laughs> and then and then I don't ask myself why is it I want to give you a shoulder rub is it because I see you have tight shoulders and I, I can improve you or is it because I just want to have physical contact oh, with yeah. someone because I actually miss it and then yeah. if I really just do miss physical contact why don't you just ask for a hug oh yeah because I can't ask for a hug because then I'm deemed gay or I'm deemed whatever, mm. right? You're like, what? You can't ask. For, what? Are you stupid? No, of course or not. Those, or those people that like, oh, can I just give you a massage? And then you give them a massage. Like, oh, can you do me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> twice as long, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> not for one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, that that's, used to be me, did it? Every time we were sharing food, like I become more aware of it. I used to be like, I don't know, don't know why. I think it's because some... People I've come across in my life are very greedy stuff. And I like to eat. I'm, I love eating. And I bring the food in. And I'd make sure everyone had their piece. And then Saru made me aware of it. That I was like, oh, Joe, you're so fair. And I was thinking, fair is a good thing. I'm a fair person. Whereas now, there's food there. Just if people really want to be like in a panic mode and eating, I'll just eat later. You know what I mean? And sure. it's, it's crazy when you, you think you're on the right path. But then there's another level. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? it's true. Yeah, because what you did was right. It was better than being greedy. Greedy, yeah. But then, like, even better than that is just having friends where you don't have to like be fair, and you actually know, okay, you would not take more, and you would not leave less for me. Right. So it's gonna be fair, even if we don't even think about. It. And also the next level of, oh, I don't want to perceive as greedy, but it's also like, I shouldn't judge myself. It's okay yeah. to be greedy. It's actually. Mm -hmm pretty healthy too because yeah. it's a part of survival and it's even more nice to to give something it's away yeah then i feel better yeah and then the feeling is better than f putting myself with food or feeling yeah. myself and then connecting with people then just that smile is great and then you forget about food cause exactly then, and because you're at a party it's not about the food right you know what right. i mean and so so there's all these levels of, of enlightenment that you have to go through Right. And then you basically try. And that's that's what I was to return back to the being grateful. Thank you for for the for the knowledge that I've learned that I've learned. Thank you for the smiles that are giving the smiles I've received. And thank you for somebody saying thank you for taking the last piece of food. And, you know, just <laughs> yeah. this is I feel so much easy now. I don't yeah. have to think about all this crap yeah. anymore. And I can just be here in the moment right now. What does my body feel like doing right now? Hmm. Do you have a morning ritual? Actually, yeah. I, th I One of the things that I start doing recently is thinking, what wonderful things am I going to experience today? Mm. So you just ask this question, what wonderful things am I going to experience today? So I don't like, I don't force myself and like, oh, it's a beautiful day. I have to do something great today. Okay. Yeah. You, know, you know, I just, I just ask the question, what wonderful things will I experience today? And then just put a little smile on your face. Right. So instead of like, so talk, you, don't, you don't even answer the question. I don't ask, No, no, no. This technique is called access consciousness, where you just ask tons of questions about your everyday life or in the moment and then you and then you just don't find the answer but basically just accept whatever is coming which basically train yourself to be more fluent in a, in a state of being in a state of now mm. which is then welcoming i welcome things I, and I, I welcome experiences i welcome energy i just welcome it uh, instead of preventing and and a good example is the like oh I have to find the perfect girlfriend the perfect girlfriend should be so so high should have so so <laughs> blue eyes and this and this and this and that but then you're saying no to a exactly, million yeah. other women yeah because they don't fin fit your frame and one of them million others could actually be the best one for you exactly and so instead of saying what is what is the perfect for me you well you don't know what is perfect because perfect is also just an illusion mm -hmm. so basically just like hmm, i'm just gonna let go of this idea and See then what comes naturally what comes naturally but it is a it's a way of process because you've, we've been trained to think differently yeah. so now it's like okay whatever come what is wonderful 
things coming is gonna happen to me today. What is what? Are, what am I? It's gonna experience that are amazing today. Yeah. And then you just open. Yeah, I like that. And then I you like that. you might m- meet uh, you know uh, some your neighbor f- woman that you've never realized yeah, before. Yeah. You never saw her before. Yeah. And then suddenly she makes you smile. And you get a little funny thing out of it, and, and your you will maybe subconsciously find that uh, wonderful thing exactly. That day, yeah. And you just, you know, you'll just open to meet another human being that's just amazing. And yeah. that just teaches you a lot because you've just been open. And that's that's the thing that is actually, you know, so again, also being a vegan, vegan is also limiting, right? You also put uh, a frame of rules because then you're not experiencing that amazing torito, homemade torito from, from some hunter in the north of spain because you've you know you have this conviction that that's that's a, that's a dangerous because then we go into morality and uh, then like no but it's it's just the idea of just being open of yeah. just like and it's not about oh i can't do this but and then like isn't there like would you say there there's things that are wrong to do in this world again back to the improv the bridges off to higher spirituality because the the higher higher known people of high you know uh, connection with spirituality and energy and mm-hmm. universe, they know there's nothing there's nothing right or wrong, there's nothing good or bad. There's just there just is. There is energies, yeah. They they and, just and, is. and everything we're exposed to have a certain vibrational energy, right? Yeah. And, and, it, and if and we eat, if we eat meat that has been exposed to suffering for sure. four consecutive years, sure sure sure, that but then suffering goes you can have us. it yeah. and you can cleanse it as well. Because you then you are grateful and you change that energy and you're just grateful and you just so, so you have so to by that, by that logic you can do any uh, bad act say there's nothing good or bad right you do something that is bad in accordance to society such as um, a criminal act right um, like child abuse sure you do a bad act and then you quotation mark cleanse yourself there's a difference that's be- the same logic there's isn't a, it? there's a difference between being a sociopath and just being a normal uh, okay human being. <laughs> right a sociopath won't 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 say oh i'm sorry i didn't know he he just killed the the kid or what does whatever and does horrible things and then find an excuse and like doesn't really feel it doesn't really believe it uh, a, a human being of a higher nature or like or a higher state of consciousness will never harm a child will respect the child will support the child will help the child but but the same person would harm an animal um the well if you if you need if you haven't eaten for a long time or it's the only way or the the animal is trying to to do harmful by you or there is there is there's this it is like it's self defense if like an if a lion tries to attack you it it, it goes to the third floor and smashes your door open and starts I'd kill a lion you you would kill the lion well, to, to defend yourself, there would there yeah. would be there would be some kind of like you could set up an example. I'd probably eat where, everyone. of course, uh, you would like sure I would kill that. Yeah, if it's self defense. Right. Yeah, but is that what we're talking about? We're we're talking about we're talking about how would you how do you see life and how would you react consciously? So if you if you on purpose know that this this is bad and it feels bad, you'll have that in your body. And then it is not what people point at you and say, it's not bad to eat meat, but I feel bad about it. Then whatever you are feeling is what is right for you. And then and then you can and I can say there's no right and wrong. Yeah, so we we're, we're defining our own morals. You 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 do yeah, we define our own morals. Yeah. I, the, I we agree can, with that. We can both agree there is no right and wrong because nature just is, the universe just is. Meteors go come through the the atmosphere and just hit, kill somebody. Is that the uh, what is that? Is who who is fault is that? Oh, it's just nature. Tsunami. That's just nature. It's just the winter and people you know die of 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 hunger and 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 cold. Who's who are you gonna blame? We can't blame. There's no right. It's just nature. It's just is. Yeah. But we we can define it and then we can say all right. Then I I need to. Uh, cut my hair this certain way because that's the right thing to do. I need to do this because that that's the right thing to do. But you still then you're still stuck though. You're still stuck in what's right and wrong. And to be really liberated is basic to let go. To yeah, 
but then it's it is a fluent thing because you can't let you you can't let your hair grow and not wash yourself and don't wear perfume and wear nice clothes and then expect to get a job in a in a nice restaurant or somewhere else because that's what society thinks right yeah yeah but back to like you said like veganism would be like a box in thing because so you, I, I just you want to yourself... like clearly define that like it's it's not a belief mm. it's not a belief system it's just the act of 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 taking action in accordance to who you are that's all it is so i believe that there are many who do it for religious purposes right. or just because it's trendy right uh the reason why i participate in this cult yeah <laughs> is, is because it's it's just acting in accordance to what I believe. Sure. That's all it is. So yeah. so it's not like I limit myself. It's not like I'm like, ah, oh, I, I have to say no to this. There's, yeah. there's It's not like there's resistance when I go into a supermarket and right. I'm like, oh, I really wish I could have that, but my, my cult leader says I cannot have it today. Right. It's more like if 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 I eat this, then I'm harming another sentient being. Right. I'm putting that harm into myself. I'm causing right. unnecessary suffering for this world. Right and um, and I don't want to do it. I uh, yeah, yeah. And that's so. So I'm not depriving myself of the 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 glorious taste perception of trying this amazing beef jerky from uh, Tanzania or something. Right. Yeah. I, I don't want to. Right. Yeah. So so See, I would taste the beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not and that, then that and low. then but then so so you have you have your emotions and your and your body hmm. and your you're sensing i need this i i would taste this amazing if it, yeah if it was if it was wild yeah 100 percent. i'd be like okay this so, is this is culture i'd be like so and that's and that's fine as well so it's it's a sense of when you are inhibiting yourself and then if if vegan is true what else is true what else is true how how what else could you experience Right, and that's also improv. If if we create a scene and this is true of these characters, what else is true in these characters? But in life, it's also what else is true? Because what about plants? You know, they also have vibrations, and like we've they find out recently that trees communicate with other trees <laughs> that there's danger when there's fire. Yeah, um, and caterpillars. They so, can play the sound of caterpillars. We spoke about this, didn't we? The sound, yeah, of, the sound like, of caterpillars uh, can be played and then the tree releases like a chemical which makes them more uh, distasteful, more poisonous. Wow. So, yeah. Crazy so, shit. if animals are a living, breathing thing and and insects as well, do they sense pain? Do they... they well, if we take out a leg of a spider, they just go crazy and they run away. And that's where I think I, like, draw the line. Is like, it's for me, it's the farming. And it's the what the life that that animals have to live in the way that the human if, intervention. Yeah, like yeah. I don't. I would hundred percent even if sh someone like I said, if my mum gets shot, um, killed deer. That deer has been running around. It's had sex. It's had life. It's been eating. He gets shot. I think there's something in an animal. You should like it. It gets stabbed by another deer, like us, for example. If we die in a frozen lake, I think the body goes into a certain way. It's not fearful. Yes. If we were trapped in a cage, poked every day, that's worse than just being put on a stage and hung. You understand what I mean? Like it's the constant, you're trapped, stab, whip, boom, bam. That's the problem I have with it. Animals dying, they're going to die. How are they going to die? Disease, starvation, uh, by a bear. Do you know what I mean? Like a guy shooting it for me, doesn't matter. It's the farming. So I could, 100% my dream would be I actually want to make it more of a reality. First, I'm going to get a camper van. Then I would like to get like hunting light. Well, first, just go more fishing. But then eventually get hunting lights. And I'd love that dream. And just living off the land. Because it's very hard to do that now. It's such a simple thing with laws and society and the way the world works. It's such, it's such a simple thing, but it's a hard thing to access. And it actually costs a lot of money and time. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think the time part would be beneficial for me and for the animal. Sure. So that's my standpoint on it. <laughs> yeah. There's an, again, there's, there's, we choose whatever is yeah, our, still belief for me, it's right? just necessary and unnecessary harm. That's yeah. all. Like, yeah, of course I can walk down the street. I can park my car and I can be 10 inches to the wrong side, which will cause an accident. And someone will 
will you know break their neck that's not my fault i mean it is it is my fault but it's like it's unintentional right but then there's like intentional harm, which is hap- which is happening when we engage and support in a, in in an activity, such as eating meat, for example, right? Because mm-hmm. when we pay money for that, we are paying money for the whole process of that meat getting there, right? Yeah. Whereas if we go in the in the woods and we step on an ant, I mean, we we didn't want that ant to die. We didn't even know it was there, right? So I, I would say that you 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 can draw a line between these two things. Sure, you can do your be- very best, absolutely, because that's that's when in the end of the day is how do you feel about it? Yeah, right. That's that's basically the, that because you we are amazing energetic human beings and we are beings. Just we 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 can really transcend energy through all kinds of like countries and all kinds of stuff. We really can. Cause we can, we I can connect with my friend in United States, and then he can write me a message, and we don't know why, right? It just happens. Um. So so there is so we can do this, and there's more and more science proving this mm. scientifically, right? Uh, which which is man. mind blowing. Um. But people have known this for thousands of years. So uh, when yeah, it, when sure. it when it comes when it comes to it, is how do you feel? How do you want to live and how do you, yeah, what is the right thing for you, right? Um, And also, and also be surprised because maybe one day you ask your body, do you, what do you want to eat? Do you want to eat this vegan dish? No. Okay. Do you want to, do you want to, what what about this dish? No. Okay. And then your body says, I want to eat this sausage. And you're like, no, you can't eat that sausage. No, no, that must be wrong. But if you ask body and you respected it and your body says, oh, I want this sausage, then you will have to like, OK, I I respect my body. I, I then have to eat the sausage and see what happens to me then. No, no, right? but but then again, I wouldn't see the sausage. I would see how the sausage got there. Right. But I, I wouldn't weigh a sausage versus a, a, a lettuce plate. I would weigh the the unnecessary the, meran and everything that pick. Right. I assume it's exactly. the sausage has to go through in order for that sausage to get there. I would I would weigh that up with the feeling I have right now. What I'm talking about is not about it's not about it is it's about mind versus body. Where your body just have a, some kind of sensation that uh, this is what my body that what I need as a body. And then our consciousness, our mind is saying these are this is the right thing. Oh no, no, no. You can't eat this cuz you know, this steak was was horribly used in some kind of form. When your body's like, I want it, <laughs> and then you ha- you'll have to have that battle. That I'm not go, saying that you go. will. I'm t- <laughs> I'm just yeah, yeah. giving an example. No, but then again, if this is true, what else is true? If it's true that you have to act in accordance with the wants, the irrational wants of your body, then what other irrational wants of your body should you also fulfill? Yeah, and but then and then it becomes dangerous too, right? That's true. You have to trust that your body knows what's best for you. But also it goes down to being, um, it's habits and consciousness again, isn't it? It's like just doing things because it's kind of, that's where I keep my keys. I brush my teeth in the morning instead of, okay, I'm brushing my teeth because I want good teeth when I'm older. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the same as there's different levels to it. You're going to look at that steak and think, um, do I? Because I you used to try to get, I make all you try to get me with the health effect um, of eating meat, and I don't believe in that. Like I believe that eating meat is is healthy. Um, so we just use. I think we just use that to 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 lure you in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, it is it is it is really like like if I if if someone is not like, yeah, uh, even even considering hypocrisy as a real concern for their mental well-being then i would never go into like this kind of debate then i would just go like hey it's actually proven to be healthier and you can live 14 years longer on a vegan diet Mm. it would be a completely different uh, conversation yeah and then if someone is is more concerned with their kids well-being then you talk about the environment and how we can free 90 percent of the land mass and uh, and extend the the lifetime of this earth by 300 I'd years maybe yeah. going back to shepherds is the way because <laughs> the quality of the meat as well so a wild 
caught me. I've told you this before. It's like f just the amino acid profile and the um, nutrient density. Like you literally need one quarter. So straight away, you're already cutting down the human um, consumption of meat down by three quarters. Mm. You know what I mean? Which is massive. And then also the animal that's in the one quarter. The reason the meat is so nutrient dense is because it's been allowed to run chase survive have sex eat good food eat when it wants sleep when it wants because of all those things and not have fear all the time yeah okay occasionally but i think a bit of fear is good for Any, us as well yeah, yeah like yeah. that's why you should challenge yourself which you always say like you should challenge yourself to do something because if not if you're always chasing that but yeah going back to the meat <laughs> uh but yeah we we'd cut it down bring back the shepherds Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also a complete <laughs> another level, even higher level that we haven't even talked about, which is uh -oh. I yeah. knew you dropped my mic before. But <laughs> <laughs> so the sensation of feeling your body and sensing the energy, right? Mm -hmm. Now we go to that place where you allow yourself being being or you listen to your body and you listen to what's going on. So maybe let's take this example of you where your body says, "Ooh, that burger that that seems super nice." And you're like, no, 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 I need to catch this bus. I'm going to go late. That's your brain going. But your body is saying, stop and get that burger. And then because you've had the training, like, fine. I don't know why, but I'll take the burger. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss the bus. And I'm going to be late. But then you order the burger. And then you see the bus and it gets struck by a truck. And the, the bus explodes. That's oh. an extreme. extreme. But Have then, you tried that? Like something um, like that? I've never. No, because there's... Because that's, that's just in the way, isn't it? But that's the thing. I I was reading this book about Axon's consciousness, and he tells about the story where he drank the car, and he never used to drink coffee. And then the body's like, "I want coffee," and then because there's a gas station, and it's like, "This is weird. I'm not gonna get a gas," you know. And then he drives on, and then the body says something else about, uh, "And you know, I need uh, whatever it is," and like, "This is no. I'm just gonna continue," and he goes into a car crash. Where it just seemed like my the energy, my body knew I needed to do something. I needed to wait a little bit so I missed the, the traffic or I, I, I wouldn't have that energy or uh, I wouldn't have that accident. Then the accident happens and then something else because then, you know, the universe and energy is just flowing, right? Okay. But it's, it's also like, hmm, interesting to what would have happened if I would have listened. So following that logic. Mm. The higher consciousness has must have and invest an interest in keeping you alive. I'm sure I'm sure you can say that. And if it has an invested interest in keeping you alive, then it probably has an invested interest <laughs> in keeping animals alive, which are of uh, less intellectual capabilities than you are. Would you say? That you can say so, that so, about, so by about murdering. everything. And I think that's actually true, and I think that's the reason why it's becoming more and more popular, mate. And I think it's the reason why I've gone from not being total oh meat is like the staple because i genuinely thought the reason for human brain development because the i think mainly is the problem solving of being able to problem solve to catch to kill and then to cook the animal yeah but i thought oh it's a process of being human we need to eat meat and also meat is nutrient dense uh, but i've also forgot my point what we were talking about <laughs> <laughs> i think we should wrap it up uh we are nearing the uh... yeah we've done a big one we could maybe do a part a two uh, hour mark we could bro we could do a part one part two because i think yeah we can do yeah yeah can we change clothes <laughs> <laughs> no no we could just say can to be continued yeah you know they do that on everything don't they yeah we've got to be a little bit superficial and keep the did you have any audience. questions for Rolando? i did yeah yeah but the, they weren't as good as just the ones that naturally occurred so, so. these these occur naturally i think yeah something i've been i, I wondered about this this morning so improvising mm. First of all, being free from judgment, uh, having high energy and being present and aware of your partner. Anyone could technically do this yeah. without training. That's why I found, like, for example, Joe, who's never done improv, an amazing improviser, actually. Sure. Um, I mentioned was, human. What? Basically, that's human traits. Yeah, so it's, it's human traits. Yeah. Human. yeah. So that's, I'm wondering now, like, when you say that someone is a really good improviser, is that just saying that that's a really good per like a really good human being? It would be a it would be a human being that listens, who can sense, has empathy, has self-respect, has you can you can put that in the category of a really good 
But you have to remember, if that human being that is supposed to be a really good improviser and a really good human hasn't had enough sleep or have have been uh, oh, yeah. uh, um, gone through some trauma or is sick or, you know, is being violated somehow, that those skills will not show up because that, oh, that's so true. then it's just a human being that is feeling terrible, sick or don't, doesn't want to but be bothered or whatever. Okay, so technically everyone is the best improviser in the world, but then we get some some childhood traumas along the way. But, but if you practice it, it's like meditation, isn't yeah. it? People meditate. The word, It's a word. It's something that's created like by humans, meditation. Yeah, but it's actually the state of being. So, yes, if you practice it, you practice how to get into that state of being, no matter your sleep, no matter your hunger, no matter whatever. Because that's why I tell my clients, get your hunger, your sleep, your food, everything. I'm this is this is basically solving our dispute between you're always like, oh no, habits are bad. And then I'm actually they can be good. Because they can bring you to that level. And then you realize there's this level of consciousness and being. And then I say, okay, so you can now access this level without doing all the stuff you've been doing. You can access it whenever you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So gents, let me just blow your mind. Oh, right. shit. oh shit! Some, I'll say back, lean back. Lean something, back. something that we haven't really discussed, about, <laughs> right? Is our female counterparts? Okay, okay. Yeah? They they have the menstrual cycles. Once every, they follow life in a monthly basis. They are born. They 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 bloom. They the visna. They you know they fall and then they die. In the sense of that's just like female cycles. And they're ready to give birth again. And so they're, and they, we can't, we can't live without our female sisters and counterparts. They are just as much part of our lives and as we are as theirs. And when they, when they have their menstruation week, that's, that's where they need as much peace as possible and as much rest as possible. Because the body is going through this process and they need to listen to their body respect the body so they can they can actually then get the energized to be reborn and go through this amazing uh, process of giving life right of not just life in the sense of a baby but just like being having this en energy in their life being training or being really effective at work or whatever it is right but they need they have a week where they're like, just like i just need peace and then if they not listen to those those uh, that body of theirs they will get aggravated they will you know they will be annoyed and that's where we as men were like oh she has the red thing or oh, she's just being a woman oh women we don't understand them but it is it's, it's, in essence we have to understand the, the the what is going on with the bodies chemically mm. for them to respect their body for us to respect their body and by that also for us respect our body because we also are affected and we are affected by human beings around us and maybe we 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 need to listen to our body and get enough sleep and make that happen but it also it could be that i need to wake up be wake up tonight because my girlfriend or my lover or my wife she has the menstrual cycle right now and what she needs is just peace and quiet and i'm i'm just going to caress her that's i'm asking her body what is it she needs she just needs to be caressed and hold and i and then while she's sleeping i'm not i'm not going to sleep for 2 or 3 hours cuz i'm just going to take care of her so you you you've, you've mentioned a lot of sacrifices you have to go through in order to sustain a good relationship with your partner but what is it you get out of it you will you will you will have because then then she will not for it's not a sacrifice first it's really important to Stay, say staying up all night no it's, it wouldn't be a sacrifice it would just be a support well it depends on how you see it right but it would be a support yeah. of the nature I mean, if i stayed up all night then the next day i would sleep late and i would ruin my sleep cycle i would skip my meditation practice i will have a groggy next day and sure but you will make another human amazingly wonderful and she will probably love you more for it give you a <laughs> smile and then you will feel better about yourself and that together you will lift up the relationship and probably affect other people around you. And bring a great child into this world. So it's not it's, it's not a sacrifice per se. Well, you can choose to see it this way. Or you can just say, I'm listening to what to her body. I'm listening to my body. 
and I'm 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 just gonna hold her and support that human being if that's what she wants. Because and if you want to look at another, because I don't want her to be cranky and then throw things at me and break up with me, because mm. she's just gonna be ah oh, right. But it's what my point with all of this is: we have f- women sisters that are going through a chemical process every month, basically the nature of life every single month from their early teens to their later years and we are part of them and they affect us just as much as they affect themselves so we also need to be part of it it's not just like oh you need to follow abc and this is the and systemize everything because basically by systemizing the things we're basically neglecting neglecting women listening to themselves and their bodies that's why i think it's a major difference between men and women i really think like men we like like a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh-huh. Whereas I feel like girls like A, Z, Q, Z, P, or Q. There is a system. They can just do it. And I'm like, wow. There is, there is, they, they have, a, a, they have a, a cyclist. The thing is, we have a society that don't follow that. We all take these pills. Then it affects the system. Exactly. But they don't, in, in, for thousands of years, people don't have needed pills. Yeah. But they have they have pains, they have all kinds of things. But it's also when you have when you know that in the in the menstrual week they just need peace and look inwards and find their inner temple and their inner 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 female power. We don't have we haven't constructed a society that respects that. So sorry to interrupt. We should create a society where females don't get paid the same, but they get paid when they have time off. Boom. <laughs> just like... What? So, what, so did they, I, they what did I... Just, what did I agree to you? <laughs> so they don't, get, they don't get paid the same, but they get paid oh, when they have time off. So right. they can have like a, a chill week. Right, yeah. And they won't lose the job. They only lose the job on the basis of um, how good they are yeah. and not to do with them having a week off. This is not it. a political channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what, they, what, they, what, the wise, what the wise ones say about this is just that the women, because life is around them all the time. They can't, mm-hmm. they can't just run away and be, live in a cave for a week when they have kids and they have families and friends and so on, jobs. So what, they, what the wise say is just, Make sure that you know when the week is and then don't make as many as appointments. Just make yourself a nice bath. Focus more on yourself in that week than focus on others. Turn down the speed and for that week and just take care of yourself. But we don't have managers and, and, uh, and bosses or politicians that are aware of this. And we don't have a system that says, you know what, take care of you. And we don't have physically. Do you still think a... that women are suited leaders? Oh, absolutely. Knowing that they can have like a sudden drop in their rationality and uh, I think, emotional state. I think. Uh, I think if they don't take care of themselves, they'll have those drops. If they take care of themselves, then they they are much as value as any other human being, if not even a better, because they they are more empathetic, right? They are caring. So, so for thousands of years, it was Mother Earth. It was, you know, it's, the women have immense, immense power. They can give birth. That's, you know, for example. But I'm also sure that... Better. They, so you would actually say that women are better leaders than men? Um, depending on, on the personality. Uh, uh, what is a leader? A leader is also something, someone who has wisdom, somebody who can... Basically, a good leader is somebody who can, has empathy, right? Mm-hmm. And, and both men and women can find empathy. I just think women has more empathetic jobs than men have. Um, and men have more uh, engineering jobs because that's, that is more them constructing and finding uh, systems and stuff. Uh, I just think that is strength and... In, of, of the different genders, but together, absolutely. And I think uh, for a good, a good, like I think that's why in a family, the the male and 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 the female together as important. a team are just as important to to lead a family. So, so the the prime minister shouldn't be it, one entity. It should, should be, be two. A, a that's man what and a I wife. just did. It should <laughs> no. It should be a man and a wife. It should be two entities. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which is a man and wife. Two different people. But then they have to before they get their like job title, they have to spend a week together and then prove that they've had sex. <laughs> I like I like and the Star Wars. Sti- and that they're still friends. Yeah. 
I like the Star Wars with the Jedi Council and and then Joda is you know one of the the elders and so on. Then there's some kind of because that's the way they used to have in tribes and stuff. There would be a, a trust fund for advisors tribes, and stuff. Yeah. There's you can definitely you know um, yeah. we can definitely improve our our political system. Yeah, and our society. We could definitely. I think that's something you can say every day of the week <laughs> about everything, isn't it? We Word. can improve the way sandals work. <laughs> <laughs> we can improve curtains. I think curtains could use some improvement. Sure. Yeah. Isn't it true? Well, yeah, we can. Like and then it's then we are back to the to the infinite game, right? We know how to create a curtain. Yeah. And then we pass the knowledge to our children, and then children create an even better curtain or yeah. better system. She's the best curtain ever. <laughs> Yeah, mm, let's call it uh, Wally. No, 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 no. That's too long. Let's just call it Wall. I like that. <laughs> right. That was it for this episode of the Freeway. With us today was Rolando Junquera. Is that si. right? Yes, very si. good. Yeah, yes. Si. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, the greatest improviser in Copenhagen. <laughs>